In Yiddish, we say everybody should have a freilichen Hanukkah. It's a happy Hanukkah. And our joy comes through our strength. And therefore, I first want to express, as I always do, as we should always do, hakarat tov, gratitude, to people who are not only concerned about themselves and their own families, but who are dedicated and devoted to the needs of the entire community. So we have to thank the Vada'ir, the Jewish Community Council, led by the Rabbonim, Rabbi Emanuel, Mr. Mintz, and, and the whole presidium, who many years ago took the decision, a very important decision, that if a non-Jew is going to make the effort to be a Jew, then we have to create a program that is worthy of them. And that is what they did. And therefore they involved Rabbanim. They involved incredible teachers. And they involved uh, a staff that manages the program. And Bar Hashem, we want to thank all of you. We want to thank the Vod. We want to thank our incredible teachers. We want to thank uh, Michelle and the staff for all their work and dedication. And they put their whole heart and effort into this program. And I believe it is worthy of every candidate who is here that they know that they belong, that from this, pro this program itself is recognized and loved around the world by rabbis, chief rabbis, and Bate Dinim. And therefore, Hanukkah is a beautiful Yom Tov, a beautiful holiday, because Hanukkah is all about strength and determination, believing with all your heart and might in the values of Torah and mitzvahs, and that our purpose in this world is to serve Hashem. And there can be no greater job than that. You know, and I want to highlight it. Hanukkah, we light uh, eight candles, eight days. The festival is eight days. And we all know, I know you know because your teachers do a good job, that uh, the reason why eight days, because after the Maccabees came and liberated Eretz Yisrael and liberated the Beis Amigdash, the Holy Temple, and they came and they only found one flask of oil to light the menorah, that instead of one day, the miracle, God made a miracle and it lasted eight days. So everybody asks the most obvious question is, if the miracle was seven days, because the first day they had enough oil for the first day, so the miracle was seven days, so why do we light, why do we have the festival for Yom Tov for eight days? It should be for seven days. And the answer is in the story. And it parallels what's happening today in Israel, affecting Jews all over the world. At that time, Antiochus was the ruler 
one of the Greek rulers of Alexander the Great of Macedonian's empire. So you're talking about one of the most powerful armies in the world. And here were a group of Kohanim, of priests, whose job was to tend to the base of English. To see that the offerings were brought in the right time. And here they were fighting the most powerful army in the world. And they succeeded. They defeated them. Just as Israel today would defeat any army in the world. And that is because of one thing. It didn't happen by chance. Okay? The betochen, the trust and emuna and faith that they had in God, that they believed with all their hearts that Hashem would fight with them, they really believed it. Therefore, they strategized and they pulled off the wonder of wonders. With whose help? With the help of Hashem. They had that confidence, that tremendous confidence in themselves that they would be victorious. And they were. Against all odds. It, you're talking about, if you want to compare it today to then a, a, a band of Kohanim defeating the Potaf army, it would be like, uh, like any, any army in the world, the weakest army in the world, defeating the United States, Russia, and China. That's what we're talking about. You can't even imagine it. And yet it's part of our history. It's, it happened because of that. In Zechariah, it's written, Lo bechayel uvelo bekoach kim beruchi omer Hashem tzvos. God says, it's not, it will not happen due to your strength or your might, but only with my blessing, says Hashem of hosts. And if you believe in it, and you fight for it, you will succeed. And that is what is happening today. We know the miracles, because Hanukkah is the nest of miracles, the miracles that are happening in Gaza, and believe me, that is a, almost an impossible war, even for a great army like Israel. It's almost an impossible war. They hide, and they've been, pre they've been preparing many years for this war. And they have all the booby traps, everything necessary to kill as many soldiers as possible. And this was their plan to bring them in and do exactly what they're doing. And the miracles that are happening in Gaza is incredible. And they're going to be writing books about them. We get videos, I'm sure some of you have seen the videos of soldiers in the front telling stories that are absolutely unbelievable. I'll just share one of the many stories that I read, that I saw. And this was from a soldier who was in the front on Gaza in his platoon. And he was writing what happened. And his platoon was told that there was a cache of arms in a street in Gaza, a cache of arms, tremendous cache of arms, and their job was to destroy it. And the army operates around 2 o'clock in the morning, late, late, late at night. And that's when this platoon went and to that street which they were told they had to go, 
and they were all lined up, and the, the soldier who was there, he's the one that videotaped and sent out this incredible story. And there are many, many others. And they all stood in line, a long line, and slowly were walking the steps to go from home to home, not knowing what surprise they might end up finding. And then all of a sudden, and this is a soldier talking, all of a sudden a dove, a bird of peace, came flying, and the commander was in the front. By the way, in Israel, all the officers and commanders, when they go into the war zone, they are always in the front of the army. In all other armies in the world, the officers and commanders are in the back, behind the soldiers. And this they get from David HaMelech, because David HaMelech was always in the front. King David always was in, in the front. He led. And all of a sudden this bird comes flying, and the commander of that platoon was in the front. The bird comes flying right in front of the commander. And it stops right in front of him, and it's flapping its wings. And then all of a sudden, the bird stops flapping its wings. Yet the bird is still up in the air. It didn't fall down. And the commander was spooked by what he saw. And then one of the soldiers behind the commander realized what was going on. And the soldier went right in front of the commander and looked very carefully. And they also have these special goggles that see, see at night. But he looked very carefully and he spotted they have now a very, very thin wire that you can't even see the wire. And this wire was a booby trap. And the minute the commander would have tripped the wire by coming and walking through the wire, the whole street would blow up. And this bird stood on that wire and was light enough, of course, not to trip the wire, but was there to warn these soldiers, or all of them would have been killed. This is just one of the many, many, many miracles. And if you listen to the words of the soldiers, even today, you the quotes coming from them, we want to finish the job. We want to make Israel safe. No matter what the cost, we want to finish the job. There is that assuredness in his voice in their voices, in the country's voices, and they're not only fighting the battle for our brothers and sisters in Eretz Yisrael, but they're fighting all our battles, and I'm very proud of Jews all over the world who are united for the, to the cause, as never I've seen in all my life, never seen the Jewish people so united. And this will ultimately bring more light to the whole world and benefit all the nations of the world. They don't see it, but it will benefit all the nations of the world. Also, I want to just say this. Uh, I just received, I mean, a picture. I don't know if you could see this, but it's a rabbi, Yisrael Meir Lau, who is the former chief rabbi of Israel, the father of the present-day chief rabbi of Israel. And he's standing next to a young man, a young boy, uh, who just turned 13, bar mitzvah. I want to read you what it says over here. And Rabbi Lau is 
a formidable rabbi. Been to Montreal a number of times and all over the world. He's, a, he's an am amazing orator and uh, a big Talmud Chacham. And it says like this, State of Israel, 1950. That's quite a number of years ago. Even before I was born. 13-year-old Holocaust survivor, Yisrael Meir. It's a boy, 13 years old. Celebrated his bar mitzvah as an orphan because his parents were murdered by the Nazis. 73 years later, Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau, the former chief rabbi of Israel, stood beside 13-year-old Ariel Zohar, an orphan whose parents were murdered on October the 7th, just as he marked his bar mitzvah. Two orphans, two heroes, two links in a long chain of Jew Jewish survival and triumph over darkness. This really touched me because, again, this characterizes the story of the Jewish people, the story of the miracle of Hanukkah, and the story of the miracles that are, that are happening today, where Israel is trying to bring light to the world, to the whole world. And I'll conclude just with a, a halakhic, the Rambam says, and this is very important. The Rambam says that uh, this, this, the power of Hanukkah and the, and the miracle of lights, and especially what I told you, it brings us the confidence and strength to fight for what we believe in and live by what we believe in. And the Rambam says that uh, if, you, if, let's say, a poor person has only money to either buy food or uh, a candle to light, candles to light the menorah on Hanukkah, the Rambam says, Maimonides says, that you should buy the, the candles. Okay? But then the Rambam says, as I ask, uh, uh, there's another qu question he points out. What happens, as we had this year, as we have every year, when Shabbos, when Hanukkah comes out, falls out on Shabbos? So therefore you have the Shabbos candles, and you have the Hanukkah candles. And what happens if you only have enough money to buy one or the other, the, either the Hanukkah candles or the Shabbos candles? What do you buy? Not like, what, what do you think you buy? Shabbos. Okay, everybody says Shabbos. You know why? Peace in the home. Peace in the home. Shalom bias. Okay? We are great when we're one family. And that communal family begins at home. So therefore, that even trumps the Hanukkah candles, the strength in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. Start, what's even more important is when there's shalom bias, when there's peace in the home. So let us continue to remain united. We will continue to see the great miracles in Eretz Yisrael and all over the world for, for, the, Jewish, for the Jewish people. And Be'ezrat Hashem, Hashem looking down at us, seeing the shalom and achdus, the unity of our people, will finally bring the Mashiach Tzidkenu Bimheirah of